the wind is in the sails of, of green investing. The uh, top line revenue growth of green companies, of EVs, will completely dominate the top line revenue growth of the old gasoline powered vehicles, for example. So I'm not too late to get into this. It is very, very early and for at least the next 100 years, uh, climate change will be the dominant investing. I have a Tesla and, uh, and I feel guilty when I take a jet. Um, but what we do with our money is much more to the point. 50% uh, of our foundation is invested in green technology. Jeremy Grantham, a legendary investor and co-founder of GMO, recently sat down for an interview on Bloomberg Wealth with David Rubenstein. During this conversation, Grantham fervently conveyed his solid commitment to confronting the climate crisis head on. Grantham, the man who believes that the most pressing issue of our time is not the stock market's wild swings, but rather the impending catastrophe of climate change. My, my job description these days at GMO is working on long-term underrated problems. And it's been a wonderful time to be doing that because we have climate change, the most important issue in the investing world for the next few decades. This billionaire investor has not only founded the Grantham Foundation for the Protection of the Environment, but is also pledging the lion's share of his fortune to fight climate change. Join us in this captivating video as we explore Grantham's insights on green investments, particularly in the exciting realm of electric vehicles, also known as EVs, and discover why he believes that climate change will remain a dominant concern for investors over the next hundred years. The future is green. And Jeremy Grantham is here to show us the way. Let's get started. But before exploring into the core of the matter, let's take a moment to sightsee the profound benefits of electric vehicle or EV adoption on public health. The transition to electric vehicles holds the promise of far-reaching advantages, not only for EV drivers, but for society as a whole. Traditional gasoline and diesel vehicles release harmful particulate matter into the air, which contributes to thousands of premature deaths each year in the United States. In stark contrast, electric vehicles produce absolutely zero emissions from their tailpipes, representing a substantial improvement in public health when integrated into personal, public, and commercial transportation systems. California, a region with a notably high rate of EV adoption, serves as a compelling example of the positive impacts on public health. Research demonstrates that the increased usage of EVs in that state has resulted in improved air quality and a decrease in hospital visits related to asthma. These advantages, by the way, are not limited to cleaner air. They also extend to substantial cost savings in healthcare. By the year 2050, it's projected that the widespread adoption of EVs will save an estimated $12.6 billion annually in healthcare costs for the residents of Los Angeles alone. This impact is particularly crucial for low-income and minority communities situated near major freight hubs and high traffic areas, often the result of historical discriminatory policies that placed highways in these locations. These communities face the compounded challenges of air pollution, leading to respiratory and cardiovascular problems. To address these health disparities and enhance public health, it is imperative to ensure that EV adoption remains affordable and that a comprehensive charging infrastructure is established. These measures will not only reduce the health risks associated with traditional vehicles, but also promote equity and access to clean transportation solutions ultimately leading to healthier communities for all. It's, uh, I, I feel that the economy, and, and particularly the stock market, is very secondary to a, a list of important long-term problems that we have that no one takes seriously enough yet. And I feel that when we sit here discussing the stock market, we're a little like Emperor Nero fiddling while while Rome burns. Um, my, my job description these days at GMO is working on long-term underrated problems. And it's been a wonderful time to be doing that because we have climate change, the most important issue in the investing world for the next few decades. We have uh, shortages of resources 
We have shortages of manpower, a population bust the like of which we have never seen, particularly in a few countries like China, with huge significance. We have an incredible growth in inequality, which I think is the poison in the political system. And we have a great surge of toxicity. I think we've made our planet unfavorable to life in every form, including homo sapiens. And these are real issues. They're moving incredibly fast. They threaten the well-being of homo sapiens. They threaten perhaps the existence of a stable global society. So, but we, we, uh, we, we spend all our time and energy discussing of these relatively trivial issues, which I've spent my life studying. And for good or bad, I have spent a lot of effort thinking about the great bubbles. In this interview with David Rubenstein, Jeremy highlights his concern that the stock market and the economy are often given too much attention these days. He suggests that these topics, while important, are light in comparison to more significant long-term issues that our world faces, with climate change taking center stage. His analogy of Emperor Nero fiddling while Rome burns is a stark reminder of how we might be trivializing vast issues like climate change. Climate change, as Jeremy asserts, is the most pressing concern for the next few decades. The urgency of addressing climate change cannot be overstated. It's not just an economic, social, and political issue. It is an existential threat that affects every aspect of our lives, and it could reshape the world as we know it. Rising temperatures, extreme weather events, and the depletion of natural resources are already affecting economies and communities worldwide. Ignoring this issue in favor of stock market discussions could have catastrophic consequences. Jeremy also touches on other interconnected problems like resource shortages, population decline in some regions, growing inequality, and toxic societal dynamics. These issues are all intrinsically linked to climate change and could exacerbate its impacts. It is a call to shift our focus from short-term gains to long-term survival and sustainability. You've got to frame it in a, in a more interesting way. And, and fortunately, the reality is that the effort going into climate change, for example, is so impressive. It's moving so fast. It's attracting so many of the really best scientists that uh, you can look back at what people thought would happen to wind, solar, and storage, and EVs. We have done much better than people thought 20 years ago. So we frame it as the race of our lives, that the, the good news is moving faster than we thought. You all know about the bad news because the headlines are dripping with this news for the last two years in particular. Fires, death, droughts, food problems, hurricanes, ocean level rise. It's all around us. And, and the press certainly has picked it up and most people realize that this is a serious issue. Jeremy's response is a reminder that it is crucial to frame discussions about the state of the world, especially concerning pressing issues like climate change, in an engaging and informative manner. He acknowledges that it is easy to become overwhelmed by the seemingly negative aspects of our world today, but he encourages us to focus on the positive developments too. Moreover, Jeremy highlights the remarkable efforts being made to combat climate change. The global commitment to addressing this issue has been impressive, with a rapid pace of action and a strong influx of top scientists dedicating themselves to finding solutions. In particular, he points out the progress in renewable energy sources like wind and solar power, as well as the development of electric vehicles. These advancements have exceeded the expectations of experts from two decades ago, showcasing our ability to make significant strides in addressing environmental challenges. To maintain a balanced perspective, Jeremy acknowledges that the media often emphasizes the negative aspects, such as wildfires, droughts, food shortages, hurricanes, and rising sea levels. These issues are undeniably significant and demand attention, but he encourages people to also consider the positive progress that's occurring simultaneously. By framing the situation as the quote-unquote race of our lives, he conveys the urgency of the matter while highlighting that we are making faster progress than anticipated. Not, not, not enough. I, I figure 
but I, I have a Tesla and uh, and I feel guilty when I take a jet. Um, but what we do with our money is much more to the point. Uh, 50% of our foundation is invested in green technology. And half of that, 25% we do ourselves. We have a team of, of about six people and we've done We've done about 60 deals uh, directly. It is often thought that uh, there might be a bubble in green investing because some people say so much money is going into green investing that maybe that's a bubble. Are you worried about that? I am worried about that. But the good news is countries all over the world are finally realizing this is the serious issue. They're moving their, their tax structure, they're moving their subsidies, they're moving their research dollars uh, to, to, to green. Jeremy honestly acknowledges that while he is personally concerned about climate change and has made some environmentally conscious choices, he believes that it's not enough. He mentions owning a Tesla, which is an electric car known for its lower carbon footprint compared to traditional gasoline-powered vehicles. However, he also expresses guilt when it comes to air travel, recognizing that flying on private jets or other forms of air travel can have a significant environmental impact. Jeremy then shifts the focus to what he considers a more impactful way to address climate change, the allocation of his foundation's financial resources. He states that 50% of their foundation's investments are directed towards green technology initiatives. Within this 50%, 25% of the investments are managed directly by a team of approximately six people, and they've been involved in about 60 deals. This approach highlights the recognition that addressing climate change requires more than just individual action. It necessitates substantial investment in green technologies and initiatives that can drive meaningful change at scale. By committing a significant portion of their foundation's resources to green technology, Jeremy and his team are actively working to promote environmentally friendly solutions and contribute to the broader effort to combat climate change. I am worried about that. But the good news is countries all over the world are finally realizing this is the serious issue. They're moving their, their tax structure, they're moving their subsidies, they're moving their research dollars uh, to, to, to green. The IRA in the US, a wonderful example, has really set, set the wheels turning. And uh, the wind is in the sails of, of green investing. The uh, top line revenue growth of green companies, of EVs, will completely dominate the top-line revenue growth of the old gasoline-powered vehicles, for example. So I'm not too late to get into this. It is very, very early, and for at least the next hundred years, uh, climate change will be the dominant investing. Grantham acknowledges the concern of a potential bubble in green investing due to the influx of money into this sector. However, he counters this worry by highlighting several significant factors that support the sustainability and growth of green investments. Jeremy points out that countries worldwide are increasingly recognizing the seriousness of environmental issues. They are taking proactive measures to support green initiatives by restructuring tax systems, providing subsidies, and allocating research funds towards green technologies and solutions. He specifically mentions the example of the United States' Individual Retirement Account, or IRA, as a positive influence, demonstrating a commitment to green investing. Jeremy emphasizes the promising outlook for green investments. He stresses that the market for green investments is expanding. Investors are rushing to invest in climate-friendly solutions, and one big opportunity is the electric vehicle revolution. This shift could bring significant economic benefits. In the United States, from 2020 to 2021, the number of EV-related jobs grew by over 26%, and about a quarter of all global investments in EVs until 2030 are planned for the U.S. However, fully capitalizing on this growing market requires investments at both local and federal levels, along with smart policies and regulations. Thankfully, there's a substantial $245 billion in federal funding allocated through the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act for EVs. This funding is set to boost the production of EVs and their batteries domestically and expand the national charging network. 
This initiative will generate tens of thousands of new jobs in various sectors, including high-quality roles in automotive, construction, and electrical work, benefiting communities across the nation. He points out that these green companies are experiencing robust top-line revenue growth, beating that of traditional gasoline-powered vehicles. This indicates a notable shift in consumer preferences, with more people opting for eco-friendly transportation options due to factors like environmental awareness and government regulations favoring clean energy. And thus, the demand for EVs is expected to rise. Importantly, Jeremy believes that the green investment landscape is still in its early stages. Jeremy also projects that climate change will remain a dominant concern for investors over the next hundred years. This underlies the enduring relevance and significance of green investments. As the world confronts the consequences of climate change, companies and technologies focused on mitigating environmental impact are expected to continue garnering attention and investment interest. <laughs>